Hello and welcome to today's Thought for the Day. As we continue to wait, watching the story of coronavirus unfold around us day by day, affecting each of us in different ways, as we also evaluate decisions made by political and medical leaders, there's an increasing sense of being worn down and of carrying a great weight. When I travel to pick up food supplies or work, I'm noticing how more people are out and about on the roads and in the city. This is despite the government lockdown still being in place. That human longing, almost at any cost, to be out moving amongst others in community is very strong. Financial hardship, stress, uncertainty about our future, increase in domestic violence, makes it very difficult to be still. Our rapidly changing global and local terrain makes us restless. However, this time also continues to be a landscape that is marked by many spontaneous acts of kindness and generosity. Unlooked for, gratuitous, but powerfully felt acts of goodness continue to be shown by all sorts of people towards all sorts of other people, strangers and friends in need and distress. But despite all this, and despite the government assistance at this time, there are those who in their heightened sense of isolation, loneliness and helplessness fall through the cracks. A saint whose story in more recent years for me has broken free from being a cliche is St Francis. He is a saint who fell through the cracks and despite all improbability found the God of love right there in that deep dark crevice. We can interpret the life of St Francis in many ways depending upon the lens we look through. The story of St Francis who lived at the turn of the 13th century on one level makes a rollicking good read. His father, a wealthy merchant, Francis was well educated, loved fine clothes and the high life. He was a romantic figure who, as a young man, became a knight fighting for Perugia in its town's warfare with Assisi. Locked up for a year as a prisoner of war in a dungeon, after release, he suffered physical pain for the rest of his life. He was filled with longings, passions, as well as partyings. But prayer became increasingly important. And in the early 13th century, he had a now famous vision. Sitting in a dilapidated church before the San Dominiano cross, he heard Christ speak to him. Francis, go and repair my house, which you see is falling into complete ruin. And so he began his life of radical poverty wandering with his brothers, teaching the life of littleness with a large, a littleness within the larger church. He founded an order, wrote a rule, but later struggled with its overwhelming success and so resigned as its head. This littleness of St Francis is not one of subservience to an external force. What St Francis discovered, I think, is what Rowan Williams describes as the yielding to the transforming power of acknowledging dependence on an unconditional source of affirmation. Yielding to the transforming power of an acknowledging a dependence on an unconditional source of affirmation. Note well, littleness here is not about yielding to an alien force. This is a power which affirms us deep down inside our very self. The more Francis let go, entered into the depths of his own suffering with a strong felt sense of the love of God, the more he discovered 
the deeply unconditional nature and profound nurture of God in his own life. With God, he was then able to climb down into the cracks and reach into the brokenness of other people's lives and bring comfort for them. His own stigmata was symbolically the kinesthetic marks of God's love pouring into the suffering of the world. St Francis channeled peace. He found joy and became the sign of a God whose well of love is endless, a God who could be named and praised even in the greatest of suffering. There is a famous story of St Francis and the wolf of Gubbio. A wolf was terrorising that Italian town and keeping it under siege. No one could go out. St Francis did. He went out, met the wolf, named him as his brother and commanded the wolf in the name of God to cease its attack on the township. The wolf bowed its head and relented, going back into Gubbio as a friend of St Francis. I'm not telling this story to inspire us to disregard our present government's instructions for saving lives by staying at home. Far from it. But I'm telling the story because it begs the questions. What is the wolf that terrorises and keeps our own heart under siege? Is it fear? Is it uncertainty? Is it suffering? St Francis was able to venture into these hard places with courage and the love of God. He was transformed here and from here he was able <coughs> to transform others. This is where the love of God is most with us during this time of COVID-19. In the cracks of our hearts and our lives. When we, like St Francis, notice and name the fears that keep us inwardly under siege. Like that wolf at Gubbio, then if we name these fears, we can offer something that's very real, life-giving and transformative to another person, whether that person is a friend or a stranger. God bless you.